Welcome to the part of video where I don't like objects. Now don't get me wrong, I like objects. In fact, it would not be wrong to say that I love objects. They make life so much simpler. But there are certain ways through which you can define the objects, the more formal way, and I don't like that much of the formal approach. It makes things, a lot of bulkiness uh, is included in the code. Let me show you what I mean by that. If you're gonna reading, uh, be reading the documentation, uh, you're gonna land up on this page of object by MDN. I highly recommend always to write whatever the keywords you're looking up for to search for JavaScript. Just write MDN after that because the W3 schools is really nice, but I'm not a big fan of it. The documentation by MDN is way, way better and is much more updated as well. So you're gonna land up on this page by object and you're gonna see something like this. Now, before we move further, let's read a couple of lines, not much. It says, nearly all objects in JavaScript are instance of object. A typical object inherit properties and blah, blah stuff, and then object.prototype. So we saw that something what we were studying is coming from the part of this documentation page. And everything is an instance of this object, and that is why they are all of them are holding this prototype or proto, and we created an array that was also in behind the scenes somewhere, an instance of this object, that is why it was having all those protos. So everything, almost everything is an object, almost. Now notice here on the left hand side, you see all of these uh, things that what are the methods available with these objects and what are the objects uh, properties that you can have. Now notice a sidebar, everything that is having this down arrow sides, uh, that means that is being deprecated. So please don't read that one. Everything that has an exclamation sign, that means it is not yet standardized, so it's somewhere in between. It's not yet like deprecated, it's not being fully implemented, so you can avoid that part too. Everything that has the delete icon or the trash icon, uh, it means it's already gone, so it's not no longer working in full-fledged way, so use it on your own risk. So that's a brief about documentation. So here you're gonna see that you can create objects through variety of ways. The first way or the most common is object.assign. And you can assign these key value things and can create objects based on that. So we have a target and a source and we have this target and we have got this source and everything just assigns as a key value pair that we saw in the object that how we do that name and then this name. So yes, we can do that by using this uh, target and source one as well. This is not really that common to create object based on this, but the second one, which is object.create, this is the most common way how we create the object. So this is a nice example up here, but I would like to code up my own example to explain how this is all going on. Let's see that how this is up here, and then you're gonna understand that why I really, I'm not really a big fan of it. Okay, so for example, we are gonna create a simple user. Now again, the thing that we are learning in this section, the five not advanced section is, we don't create directly an object, rather we like to create a kind of prototype and based on this, rest of the objects are created. So it's almost like a class architecture, but there are concept of classes in JavaScript, but let's just say we are creating a prototype. And this is gonna be the basic one, which is having, which is having a name. Right now the name is gonna be empty, empty strings, and it's gonna have a method. So let's just call this one as uh, simply get user name, uh, that's fine. And again, we have got this function just like this. It doesn't do much. It just returns you a log back uh, that says uh, user name is, and then we use the dollar sign like this. So this is something we have seen probably a hundred times. Yeah, that's exaggerated, but we have seen it many times. Okay, so how do we create further than this? Uh, we can actually create any object. Let's just say we create an object, Ahitesh, but if I go back to the documentation that how I can create it, the creation part is a little bit weird. Notice here it says object.create and then person. So what it expects you that you're gonna use something like this object, then a dot create method. In the create method, you can pass on a couple of things. Let's start with the basic prototype. So what is the prototype? Yes, we defined it just earlier that this is the base template on which everything should be defined. And you might be a bit surprised to know that when I just use this object.create, it is expected that this user is gonna by default a name of empty and is gonna have this get user method. But to your bit surprise, it behaves differently based on what engine is running the JavaScript. So let me just log this here. 
So log and let me log this Atesh. Let's go ahead and run this node. We are into 0, 05. This is 0, 02. There we go. Notice this one is an empty object, but if I take this entire code, go up onto different engine, uh, which is going to be the browser. I hit inspect, console, clean this up and run this code up here. Now notice here, although the object is empty, so we are getting 100% same result, but the thing which we are not able to see on the node version of it is this proto. So everything that you actually mentioned actually goes inside this one. So we have this method get username, we have this name, and we have further drilled down all these things which were already there. So this is a huge difference in between of them. And as I mentioned, everything that's inside the proto you want to access, you can directly access them. This is a bit confusing part of JavaScript. In case you want to access anything further inside the proto proto, you can access them directly too. So giving you a proof of this, that all that shows empty up here, I can go ahead and say Hitesh dot get uh, username. Did I call it username? Yep, get username. And I can run this one. And when I run this part, it says username is empty. So yes, all of them are accessible, but this is a little bit weirdy part of this. Now I can actually go ahead and declare a username. So let's just say I want to have an access of name. I will assign this property as with my name or maybe a full name, however you want to say. And I can run this and it gives me the results. So yes, this is another way of doing the things which nobody's a big fan. Now surely, as of now, you might be thinking, hey, there's nothing too much wrong. It's okay. It's not that weird of a syntax. Things becomes much more weird when you want to use the constructor. That means instead of saying hitesh.name, you want to pass on the properties directly at the time of creation of the object so that when you use the methods like get username, it just directly gives you an output. So that is where the weirdness kicks in. So let's just say we're going to call this one as Sam and we're going to simply call the object dot create and you pass on a prototype, which is user. But as soon as you put up a comma, notice here, it says create an object that has specified prototype. So we are giving that. And once you have this, then you can pass on an object here as well. Notice here, which says create any. So this is the object that you're passing up. And this is where the weirdness kicks in. So you hit enter and then you can pass on key value pairs, but the syntax is weird. For example, if I just say name, then I have to do is colon, then again an object. And then inside we have to pass on a value. And then this value can be anything. For example, let's just call it as Sammy. And if you want to pass on anything, something like we have done in the past, which is course count, that can be again a value which is going to be three. So something like this. And I really don't like this of this much of the weirdness in my code. Surely a lot of people use it. I'm not a big fan. You will rarely see me in the courses using this, but just to mention that this actually exists. And now if I just come up and say Sam dot get username and I run this one, uh, the result is expected. Nothing much extraordinary. We see the username as Sammy. So nothing weird about that part. But again, just to give you a fact that yes, there is a documentation available and you should be spending enough of time in reading it. Can I talk about all of these? Probably not. In any course, I cannot talk about all of the documentation. It's not really possible. But yes, you can create objects through a variety of ways and some of the good examples are available. We haven't discussed about the maps and stuff, so we cannot actually talk about them yet. But yes, a whole lot is available here. Just make sure, be cautious. Don't read anything with the exclamation because it's not yet settled and everything that has the down arrow or down thumb, that means they are being deprecated. So spend a few minutes and at least go ahead and read this much of the description. It's gonna help you a lot in understanding the behind the scene and in-depth detail of JavaScript. Oh, that's too much about the objects in a couple of videos. Okay, that's it for this one and let's catch up in next one.